here's the Harmon target curve. A lot of people like to use this particular target curve, which the you know Floyd Tool said, nah, we didn't make that to be a target curve for anybody. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's so, the best understanding many people have. So let me get this uh, out of the way here. So okay, so that's a Harmon target curve. Now here's the target curve that I've determined for my living room. Okay. Well, the base is not the same as the Harmon target, especially here. Yeah. So my the target curve in my living room is different. I mean, the treble uh, it doesn't need you know as much roll off as a Harmon target curve. So that's yeah. not correct for my living room. Mm -hmm. Now here's my home theater. Well, I I shouldn't use the same base rise, right? Mm. My particular room doesn't require that. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's my kids' room, and here's here's a way to think about it. A house curve, target curve. House curve is the way I look at it is what the room does to affect the sound of the speaker. That kind of makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that's going to depend on the speaker. It's going to depend on your room, how reflective it is, but also it depends on where your listening position is. So check this one out. This is my kid's room. Look at the face tries. Why is wow. that? Is that Why a really small that? room? Well, or? because where they sit, is right against the wall. So the yeah. sub and the speakers are against one wall yeah. and they sit against the other wall. So what do you expect? Oh yeah. Yeah. What's gonna happen? Double loading, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're going to get huge base rise, right? Yeah. That is a function of the room. That's the reason why that's the house curve of that particular position in that room. Okay. <laughs> Crazy. Now here's my studio. This is where we're at right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. So a lot of curves coming up now. It's this green curve here. Now, keep in mind, this is Harmon Target, right? The one I'm flashing here. Here's my studio. Okay. That's the curve that's required to sound correct in my studio. Yeah. None of these are Harmon Target. Yeah. Right? They're significantly different. Right? Here's Angela's office. That's the kind of the closest, I guess, to the Harmon Target, this one. Now, here's what's interesting. If I take all those out, and I just take an average of, well, did I take an average? Uh, we have Ike's, right? You know, here's a here's another interesting one. This is an example of why uh, the speaker matters. A line array. We know what a line array does. Yeah. As you back up from speakers, typically the high frequencies drop off. But a line array doesn't drop off at the same rate. Mm -hmm. So you notice that the target curve for a line array ends up becoming just more, this is flatter. Mm-hmm. Right, because there, it, as you back up, it doesn't uh, fall off as much, and it shouldn't. If you if you try to make it do this, like the Harmon target, it's not going to sound correct. Right, you're forcing it. That's the danger in generic curves. I agree with you. So yeah, Alan's house curve. Here's Fred's. Right, his his is kind of similar to my home theater. Right, and so if I take an average of all of them, though, you know the the kids' room was probably throwing it off a lot. But if you look at the an average of all of them, they start to kind of look more like the Harmon target curve, mm. right? If I were to kind of exclude, let's say, if I selected all of them and I took out the kids' room and I took an average and I clear that, boom. Ah, you know, still not the Harmon target, right? But right. kind of you get the idea. It's, it's more base and then the treble starts to roll off. However much it rolls off depends on the room. So anyway, um, point being, harm and target's not perfect for every situation, not even close. Yeah. You know, the idea is you need to figure out your specific room, your speakers, and there's there's going to be a different target for each room. So, um, I want to see Ike's room curve, and you know, here's the interesting thing about Ike's, right? So, uh the target curve also relates to like the correction that you want to make to the speakers. And this is, I don't know if this is exactly his target curve, but it's related to the, the correction that we wanted to make to his speakers. Let me show you here. Uh, boom. Hopefully this is not boring you guys too much, but you see how the treble is rising instead of Harmon target curve. You expect it to slope downwards, right? Why? Because he has a, an acoustic transparent screen. That's killing the trouble. Oh. So we want to kind of bring back some of the, the trouble. I got you. Yeah. So that's so what the screens in front of it though. Does it still look like that? 
Is that what you're saying? That's measured with the, in, the screen yeah. in place? What ends up happening is the screen makes it drop off too too much. Yeah. Right? It's dropping it off super hard. So like in order for it to sound like normal, you need to actually raise it back up. Hmm. Yeah. So you got to remember like the target curve is also the correction sometimes. Mm -hmm. You know, it becomes part of the correction that you have to make. So anyway, not going in that too much. Uh, now, if you can't catch the show, we do have an audio version at anchor.fm slash daily hi-fi. So make sure to go on over there if you like to listen to the show. <laughs>